I'm very excited about today because I get to release Zimrider 10. This is a massive update. But before I tell you about it, I'm going to give you a quiz. It's March 2024. What is the number one thing your blog post should be doing in March 2024? Think about that for a second. What's the number one thing your blog post should be doing in 2024, right? I need like that Jeopardy music going, do you know? Let me tell you, the number one thing that your blog post should be doing is answering search intent as quickly as possible. The user, I mean, we're creating content Users are looking for answers to their questions. And the quicker you can provide those answers to them, the happier they will be. And they might leave your site quickly. That's fine. But as long as they're not clicking on other results in the search engine results page, that's a positive for you because they found on your page what they were looking for. Google wants to provide users with the answers to their problems. So does Bing and so does Yahoo. And that's what Zimwriter does in version 10. The whole goal, the, the main focus of this update is to help with search intent. Search intent is first and foremost, the number one goal of Zimwriter. So when you're creating content, the content is going to answer that search intent or try to answer that search intent as quickly as possible. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, we'll start with the, and then I'll talk about the update for version 10. I'll tell you, tell you how this works. So Google has released a lot of updates in the past week some spam policies about expired domain abuse, scaled content abuse, site reputation. We're gonna be looking at this scaled content abuse. So the way this works, and this is my guess, is they're looking at some criteria, how old your domain is, how authoritative your domain is, and then how many articles you've recently published on your domain. So if you're like a, a very well-known domain like New York Times or something like that, maybe you're publishing 100 articles a day and that's perfectly fine. But if you just registered your domain, you have no authority, and you're generating 100 articles a day, that's probably going to throw up a trigger. And that's going to cause a manual review. And some reviewer from Google will come to your site and take a look. And if your site is generated for the primary purpose of manipulating search rankings, your site looks like a spam site. It looks like you're just generating hundreds and hundreds of articles a day. And the articles aren't helping users. They're not answering search intent, all this stuff but give you a manual, manual penalty. So the main focus of Google is not penalizing AI content. The main focus is content that's spam that is not helping users. So is this a change in how Google views AI content in terms of spam? Automation, including generative AI, is spam if the primary purpose is manipulating ranking of search results. What does that mean? I think the big thing that means is you're not helping users. You're just putting out a bunch of crap that has no value. There's no, there's little or no value amounts of unoriginal content with little or no value to users. That's not to say that if you create an AI site using Zimwriter and you publish a hundred articles a day, you're not going to get digged. You very well could get dinged. There's all kinds of algorithms at play in Google, but I'm going to show you how the focus of Zimwriter now is answering search intent to help those users. That's the whole focus of Zimwriter going forward now in 2024, helping users and providing original content that provides value to users. And I think the value to users that Zimwriter version 10 provides is actually better than Google. So let's do a couple examples here. And, and let me show you the update first of all. Let me explain the update inside of Zimwriter. So there's two updates, one's visible, one's kind of not. In Zimwriter, we have this new AI words. That's a new feature. We have bolding now to help readability. This is not bolding of SEO keywords. That's bolding of SEO keywords does not help readers. Bolding of words to help readability helps readers. A lot of readers skim. What you should do, and if you don't do this, you really should install Microsoft Clarity. It's completely free. It's just a little JavaScript you put in. And you can watch the heat maps of how users consume your content. It will actually show you, it will do a playback of the user, pretend this is your website right here. You'll see them scrolling down your website. It's the coolest thing ever. It's completely free. Install it. And you can watch how they're consuming your content, where they're focusing and whatnot. Definitely install it. So we're addressing search intent, one of the ways, by bolding words to help the readability, help them skim over the content. A lot of this TikTok generation, this Instagram generation, the swiping, they want to consume the content fast. Some of these words that we bold could be SEO keywords. 
but we're actually bolding words to help with readability. You can nuke AI words if you want to, but that doesn't really do much in terms of search intent though. The other thing that we do right now inside of ZimWriter is the intros have been completely changed. The intros try their absolute best to address search intent. I'll show you what I mean. So here is a user looking for history of pizza in New York City. So this is what, this is Google's AI right here. New York style pizza originated in 1905 when Gennaro Lombardi opened Lombardi's, the first pizzeria in Manhattan, Little Italy, blah, blah, blah. And then because I'm a, a person, a searcher that wants to find history of pizza, Google's like, hey, here's some places to buy pizza that does not answer my search intent. This is garbage right here. We should derank Google, so to speak, because I don't want this stuff. I don't want a map pack and all this stuff. I want to know about the history of pizza. I'm doing a book report. This is not bad. This is their generative AI. Let's look at the results down here. Pizza roots in New York City. Italian immigrants bring pizza to America. It says the same thing that Google set up there. Cool. That's the first ranked result. What is New York style pizza? The little snippet kind of talks about Gen Gennaro Lombardi. I'm probably butchering his name. All right. We have Wikipedia. Then we have history of New York pizza. All right. What is? So this is not really relevant. A brief history of New York's oldest pizzeria is not really what we're looking for. A slice of New York pizza history. This is actually history of uh, a particular store. History of New York pizza. This isn't bad. Meet a long lost father. So we got to talk about Lombardi. He's pretty important. He's pretty important to the whole history of pizza. Let's look at the article that ZimWriter version 10 wrote. This is history of pizza in New York City. Now, the settings for this, I use the new style mimic feature. And then we have SERP scraping and I enabled uh, the bolding and the intro has also been changed to address search intent all automatically behind the scenes. So this is the intro. New York City and pizza go way back to 1905 when Italian immigrants brought the magic of dough, sauce and cheese, turning it into what you now crave on a Friday night. Gennaro Lombardi was the pioneer opening the first pizzeria in the U.S using a coal-fired oven, see this? Check this out, see the bolding, that sets the stage for New York style pizza. Fast forward a bit and you've got legends like Totono, Pero, and Patsy's tossing pies into coal-fired ovens, each adding a unique twist to the iconic New York slice. This wasn't just about food, it was a culture of fusion, blending Italian craftsmanship with American flair and a smidge of competitive spirit when it came to toppings. Iconic joints like Lombardi's and Di Fara keep the tradition alive, each slice telling a story of innovation, community, and a bit of cheeky rivalry. Trust us, there's a whole lot more to discover about how a simple slice became a symbol of New York City's melting pot. That's freaking awesome. Now look, a user might come here to your site and you can watch the Clarity heat map and they'll read this and they get their answer. Maybe all they wanted to know was like when it started. They got their answer and they leave. Regardless of whether we put a little intro in here or this in here, they weren't going to read the rest of your article. They wanted their answer very quickly. Now that you've given them all this, maybe they do want to read the rest of your article. So now we have these key takeaways. And by the way, you can rename these now to main points or whatever you want in the Zim Writer options menu. There's a way to uh, rename this to something else. These key takeaways or main points, whatever you call it, will also answer the search intent, or at least try their very best to. So we have the intro answering the search intent, and you can watch all this on the Clarity heat maps as the users scroll down with your article and read it. Then they'll read this stuff. And they, they really have the answer right now that they've come here for. So everything else is just icing on the cake. ZimWriter will inject a relevant YouTube video into your article. What's the history of New York style pizza? Man, if they want to watch a video, now they can watch a video. And we have more bolding to help. Lombardi, New York style slice, coal fired ovens, New York pizza. Neapolitan technique, Italian immigrants, unique toppings. So as we scroll down, and these are all AI images that we generated. Again, the whole goal of this update is to answer search intent. Let's look at another example. Signs your boss is demeaning you. Here's some signs, micromanaging, ignoring you, criticizing you. This is all generative AI right here. So if, if ours is as good as this or better, then we're answering the search intent and we're not otherwise Google would not be answering the search intent. Google would not be helping the users. So we have this article from LinkedIn, signs your boss wants you to leave. Now that's different than demeaning you. Right? Demeaning is different than wanting you to leave. 
eight signs your boss is a toxic leader, it's a little bit different. It's not in your head. 10 signs your boss is setting you up to fail. What are the signs your boss has turned against you? So honestly, there's no results for signs your boss is demeaning you aside from Google's generative AI. Let's look at the article that we wrote. Eight signs your boss is demeaning you. Let's read the intro. Again, the whole intro is going to answer that search intent to the best of its ability. Feeling like your boss is always on your case? Let's run through the telltale signs. They ignore your messages, criticize you publicly, burden you with menial tasks, limit your growth, exclude you from meetings, undermine your ideas, and never, ever give you a pat on the back. Oh, and if they're playing favorites, you bet that's the icing on the cake. Each of these behaviors can knock the wind out of your sails, making you feel undervalued and invisible. But there's a silver lining. Understanding these signs gives you the ability to navigate this tricky terrain with confidence. Stick around and you'll uncover even more insights that could turn the tide in your favor. That's awesome. Right now we have our eight signs about how our boss could be demeaning us. Just like Google, we've answered the search intent right away. But if that's not enough, then we have our, our search intent further answered in these main points. If that's not enough, the user can then read this or watch this video, power phrases for responding to rude bosses, how to respond to insulting bosses. Awesome. We have our highlighting, our AI images, our bullet points, everything is search intent focused. Now check this out. This is actually a result that's better in ZimWriter than on Google. So day trips for families in Northern New Jersey. So this is what the AI came up with, things to do, and then sources across the web. Now check this out, check these sources right here. I want to show you the article. So day trips for families in Northern New Jersey. Northern New Jersey is brimming with family-friendly day trips that will make your cruise day anything but ordinary. Immerse yourself in a world where you can marvel at over 3,000 sea creatures at New Jersey's Sea Life Aquarium. Now we got more stuff in here, but I want to focus on this for a sec. New Jersey's Sea Life Aquarium. Now check this out. Let's go back to this result. This is Google giving us results. There's Adventure Aquarium, but that's not New York's or New Jersey's Sea Life Aquarium. If we can actually, how do we let's open up a new page? So this is Adventure Aquarium, but check this out. This is Sea Life New Jersey Aquarium right here. Completely different than Adventure Aquarium. Adventure Aquarium is not on this list. I'm just checking one more time, make sure I didn't miss it. I don't know if Adventure Aquarium is in there or not. So Google's making these recommendations. It's leaving stuff out. So that's in a nutshell, the main search intent update for ZimWriter version 10. It's going to hammer that search intent in the introduction, hammer it in the main points. If you select ZimWriter to give you that YouTube video uh, over here, you'll get usually, if there's something available on YouTube, that relevant video, you'll possibly even get results better than Google's generative AI and better than Google's search engine results page. I don't know what else to tell Google other than I think ZimWriter is doing a pretty freaking good job at providing good quality content. I want to put a little asterisk here and say, you know, Google has lots of algorithms and some of them are good. Some of them aren't very good and they're all kind of working together. And, you know, and then if they send a manual reviewer to your site, like what's his subjective opinion of things. So there's a lot of factors going into play in terms of ranking and SEO and whatnot. So just be careful. If you start generating a lot of articles, you very well could trip that manual review and then get possibly dinged. And it's not an AI thing or a non-AI thing. Again, there's various algorithms, there's various things that can trigger different reviews and whatnot. So just be, be careful, play it safe, go slow and methodically, and you'll likely have better success than if you didn't. So just, again, be careful. So with all that said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on version 10, kind of the, the path forward for ZimWriter, what you think about this, uh, what you're liking, what you're not liking. Drop a comment down below, join the Facebook group. We have over 12,000, almost 13,000 members in the Facebook group, and there are some big players in there. There's people making over six or seven figures a month, not just from ZimWriter, but from their business as a whole. So big heavy hitters in there, great networking opportunity. Join up even if you don't get ZimWriter. There's links to ZimWriter down below. There's links to other things down below, more training materials. Uh, other than that, hey, good luck with your content generation, and I'll talk to you later.